uh, laser operation, um, discuss kind of the procedures as far as using our laser. Uh, step one that we're going to cover is the air filtration system we have here. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, basic maintenance of the unit. And so to open the, the uh, filter door, turn these two knobs to the left, and the door opens up. You'll see there's two filters. We have uh, the ceramic filter and then the bag filter. Uh, the ceramic filter is very heavy, so when you go to uh, remove it, be sure you're ready to lift 50 or 60 pounds. But there's a handle here. You flip this handle to the unlocked position, to which then this box will slide out. All right, to put it back, just push it back in and make sure the handle is in the locked position. Um, as far as the bag filter below, pretty much just removes from uh, the exhaust pipe right there and you'll be able to pull it out. When you go to close the door, be sure that the door shuts tightly and that both knobs engage the lock and it's a tight fit. So that's step one as far as maintenance. As far as operation of the unit, uh, to, uh, to turn it on, just hit the power button in the middle and you'll hear the fan inside spool up. So that's pretty much the basics of the air filtration unit for the laser. All right, now we're going to discuss basic laser operation uh, as far as the control panels on the laser gun. Uh, on your laser, you can only have a few, a few buttons, uh, and that's really all you need. You have your power switch, we've, which we've already turned on. Uh, it takes about 30 seconds for the laser to actually engage. You'll see a start startup screen here. Um, once this screen shows up, you're ready to actually operate the laser. Uh, one thing to note is there is an emergency shutoff switch here. This should only be used in emergencies. If this is pressed, whatever work has been done on your current job will be lost. So uh, this is kind of a last ditch effort, but this will kill the machine immediately. Uh, if you need to stop it and you want to resume later, you'll see a pause button here. That is the button you're going to want to push to uh, stop for uh, temporary reasons. On the home screen here, you see a file, and then you have an X, Y, and then a Z uh, option. X, Y controls the, uh, the laser beam to the left and right and up and down, whereas Z controls your depth for uh, the actual laser unit. All right, so we will open the lid here and you'll notice that a red light begins blinking on your control panel. This is to indicate that uh, the safety switch has been tripped and the laser will only be in pointer mode. The laser will not cut with the safety switch is tripped. Okay, with that being said, we can now uh, discuss how to uh, align your laser for certain jobs. Um, by, by having the XY uh, option selected, we can then hit the check button. And by pushing the left, right, up and down arrows, you can see that uh, the laser head actually moves left, right, down, or up. Now there are two different speeds for this operation. If you just want the laser to move in small increments, hold the button down for no more than about five seconds at a time. If you're trying to move to the other side, by holding the directional arrow down, the highest speed will kick in and your laser head will actually move faster. This is also the same for the Y direction. And there you can see it's moving quite a bit faster. Now, to return to back to go to, uh, to adjust your Z direction, you'll hit the return arrow, which will bring you back to your home screen and also bring your laser to the home position. To adjust your Z, you'll select the Z option, press the check mark, and now by moving your arrow down, you'll notice the table drops. By moving the arrow up, You'll notice it moves the table up. Now the two speeds are also in effect here. By just pushing the button temporarily, there's a slow movement. While holding it down, there's a quicker movement. And then to get back to your home position, you simply hit return. And that's basic operation of your laser controls. 
All right, now this particular laser is equipped with uh, a compressed air inlet, and what that does is it keeps, keeps the, the actual uh, laser pointer clear of dust. Um, and so to do that, there is a compressed air line run to the back of the unit here. And if you'll take a look, we have a ball valve uh, and a uh, compressed air gauge. Okay, so to, to, uh, to supply the machine with the proper amount of air, uh, we'll turn this, uh, this valve to 90 degrees so it's lined up with the uh, inlet. Um, and that should give you about 50 PSI, pounds per square inch of, uh, of compressed air. And that's, that is what is sufficient to uh, run this laser. And then to turn it off, we'll simply bring it all the way back to the stop position and you'll see there's zero PSI. Okay, the, uh, the pressure should be regulated right at 50 PSI. And the reason for that is uh, anything higher than 50 could do damage to the machine, whereas anything lower than 50 PSI uh, will not uh, be sufficient in clearing the dust out of the path of the laser. Uh, so in order to adjust that, if it happens to be lower or higher than 50, we'll bring the ball valve to its open position. And by turning this dial in small increments, you can adjust the pressure. So turning it counterclockwise would actually lower the pressure, whereas turning it clockwise would increase the pressure. And again, you're looking for 50 PSI. So right about that would be sufficient. And then again, to close the valve, bring it all the way back to a 90 degree angle with the pipe. All right, if you'll notice, there are two hoses coming out of the back of the laser, and this is for our exhaust system. Uh, both of these hoses go to uh, our air filtration unit uh, we just covered. Um, a part of these hoses are these uh, shutoff vents, and typically these should be left open, but if one happens to be closed, simply loosen the, uh, the bolt on there, open the, the door, and tighten the bolt back. And that should be open on both of these uh, doors. Today we're gonna cover basic cleaning of the, uh, of the laser lens. Universal laser system. Uh, to do that, with the unit turned off, we're gonna lift the lid. Uh, what I have here is our laser cleaning kit and just a white piece of paper. All right, with the unit turned off, uh, the stepper motors are disengaged, so the unit pretty much slides freely. We're going to bring the laser to this point right here. We're going to bring our white piece of paper, and we're going to set it down underneath of the laser pointer. Now, with these two uh, machine screws here, we're going to loosen these up all the way, and we're going to remove this red plate. All right. Now, if you'll notice on this red plate, there is a mirror and a lens. All right, so that's step one. Then we're going to come over here, and we're going to remove this mirror right here, and we're going to set that down. Now, if you'll notice, there's also a prism back here. Now, one thing to remember is that with all of these pieces, your fingers should never come in contact with the glass. It's very important the oils on your fingers uh, will actually uh, attract dust to it and the lens will get dirty a lot faster. All right, so in our lens cleaning kit, we have a uh, lens cleaning cloth. Uh, you should always use uh, some sort of an optical lens tissue. Uh, that way you don't actually scratch. You're using regular paper towels or cloth will scratch these lenses. And we also have a lens cleaning solution in the kit. All right. So step one, we'll take and we'll remove a piece of this lens tissue. Fold it over a few times just to ensure that your finger does not come in contact with that glass. Shake up the uh, lens solution. Sometimes it sits for a few months, so make sure you shake it up well. And you'll just put a few drops onto the lens tissue. You'll take this tissue and on the mirror, you'll simply wipe it around. And we're trying to get any grime or dust or smoke that is accumulated on this lens. Uh, what happens is 
that grime will actually heat up from the power of the laser and you can melt through the lens or the mirror and that's uh, it's a very expensive replacement. Uh, with the lens cleaning solution being alcohol based, uh, much of, uh, of the solution will clear off. You can actually see how dirty that paper towel is just from, uh, or that lens cloth is just from uh, the smoke that was on this. And so now you'll take a dry piece of lens cloth and clean it up. And you should look around in the light and get, uh, uh, typically that grime will, will accumulate towards the outside of that lens. Uh, primarily the beam will be hitting the middle of the lens, but it's good to get as much smoke and grime off of that as you can and get a clean lens. With the first lens being clean, we'll go on and move to our, our next apparatus here, which is uh, the mirror and the lens. Uh, we'll start out with a fresh uh, corner of our lens cleaning cloth and just rip off a corner, fold it over a few times there, add some of our solution. And as you can see here, there's quite a bit of smoke and grime built up around on that mirror. And so we'll clean the mirror first. We'll just take our, our lens cloth with the solution on it, rub it around on there, set this aside. Every time you touch this lens, you want to start with a, a fresh piece of lens tissue. So we'll then fold this one over a few times and dry off the excess alcohol or lens solution. And again, you want to shift it around in the light and inspect it and uh, assure that uh, all that grime and smoke is off of that mirror. Now, now we'll go to the lens. Again, grab a fresh corner of our paper towel or our lens cleaning cloth. Fold it over a few times. Add some solution. and clean the actual lens portion. All right, set that aside, and we'll take our last corner of our lens cloth. And we'll dry the excess solution off of the lens. And again, just a reminder, um, do not touch the lens with uh, your bare skin. It will transfer oil and it uh, will attract more dust leading to high heat and could melt through that lens. All right. For our last step, uh, we will clean the prism, which is non-removable, so you'll have to uh, get back here. It is a lot easier if you use a flashlight or if you have a friend with a flashlight, that will work too. Um, again, we're using our lens cleaning cloth. So we're going to remove a piece of cloth, and this is just like cleaning uh, the lenses we did in the last step. Take it forward over a few times. Remove the cap and apply some solution. We're going to take it down in here. And again, in a circular motion. Very important not to touch this piece uh, with your skin. You're going to apply the solution that set for a few minutes uh, and then take a dry piece of lens cloth again always using uh, new pieces of lens cloth and in a circular motion you'll wipe off the excess solution and again inspect it for any grime or smoke or dust that may still be left on there by doing this after every a few applications you will prolong the life of the laser and uh, save a lot of heartache with burnt out lenses. With all the lenses and prism uh, and mirrors being clean, we're now going to reassemble uh, our laser system. Uh, step one is you'll take the mirror and slide it back into the slot so that the mirror is actually facing the laser. And you'll see it's really easy. It slides in there. Make sure it's pushed all the way. You'll feel a slight click but uh, little pressure is needed to do that. All right, for the, the last step of our reassembly here, um, we'll take our, uh, our mirror and lens mechanism, again, not touching any of the, the mirrors or lenses, 
and we're going to align it back into the box here again so that uh, the mirror would be facing the other mirror and we're going to slide it in here and just barely start to uh, get the screw started and then we will aim our laser with the uh, with our lens housing partially reassembled as we did in the last step um, we've actually turned the machine on reset it and brought the laser to a comfortable accessible working location here um, as you can see the lid is open typically when the lid is open you'll have a red dot showing you where your laser is. Uh, in this case we have to align this uh, this red plate just right so that it focuses the beam and by doing that simply your, your, your machine screws are still loose and you're just going to wiggle it to the left and right until you see your red dot. When you see your red dot go ahead and tighten your screws and your lens cleaning process is complete. Uh, now you'll hit the return arrow, bringing your laser back to the home position. Okay. And that is the cleaning process of the laser. Now, in order to uh, bring up your driver screen for the actual printer, you'll come down here in the bottom right-hand corner of your desktop, and there'll be a, a red box with a white diamond inside of that. So you'll open that up. And this would be the, cor the, the current project. Uh, these are string height gauges. Um, and so, you know, as you'll notice, you have uh, these images with two primary colors, red and black. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the settings. Inside of your settings, you'll see uh, your individual colors with different parameters assigned to those colors. And those parameters are for each color would be uh, the mode which is either uh, raster or vector. Raster would be for engraving images, vector would be for cutting uh, lines and whatnot. Uh, the power of the actual laser, uh, this is the percentage of power that is going to each of the lasers. You have your speed in a percentage. You have your uh, your PPI, which is the amount of pulses per inch that that laser is shooting at. So there's 780 pulses per inch of uh, the project done. Uh, your z-axis height, which is the height of the material you are cutting, and um, an indicator as to which laser is being fired. Okay, now to adjust each of these, you simply click on one color. So this would be the, the parameters assigned to anything black on your image. And you can see you can adjust your power setting, your speed, your parts per inch, your, your, your pulses per inch, or your z-axis height. Okay, as well as you can select the mode, which laser is being fired, top, bottom, or both. Each laser is 60 watts for a total of 120 watts. And your z-axis, which if you have a, a specific height of something, you will select to on, and you can see. Now, any changes that uh, you might make to this, you're going to want to hit set as, uh, to, to save those uh, parameters for that color. So you would hit set and it would lock everything in. Um, also one function of this program is uh, we have some pre-set, uh, um, set it, let me start over, preset settings. I just meant all right, and action. All right. Another function of this program is uh, some pre-made settings we have for common materials we use uh, in the lab. And so, if you hit the load option here, uh, you'll see a folder open up that uh, has anything from uh, uh, Korean, uh, like countertop material, to Lexan, um, different projects we've done, such as fretboard production. Um, some common ones that are used a lot would be the engraved photos, which is what you would use um, when engraving, you know, guitar bodies or uh, anything like that into wood. And so uh, there are um, quite a few different options in there. And so in order to select something like that, I would double click on engrave and I would hit apply. And then I would come up and 
Uh, now this is important is you want to measure whatever size the material is and enter that into your z-axis. So if it were an inch and a half, you would put in 1.5 oh, inches set and then you would come down to okay.